Being able to fly in a straight line is a fundamental skill for a pilot. To tell if the glider is flying straight, we use the same visual clues we use in the turn. The wings are level, so the horizon is symmetrical around the nose of the glider. The gap between the nose and the horizon is constant, so that we have a constant speed. Finally, the yaw string should be straight to indicate that we are not yawed off to one side. If there is no crosswind, the glider will fly straight towards any ground feature we point at. In practice, there is nearly always some crosswind that will blow us off course. This is similar to a boat crossing a river and being swept downstream by the current. The faster the river flows, the further downstream the boat is carried. Time for some terminology. Your course is the way you want to go and your heading is the direction that the glider is facing. Finally, the track is the route the glider takes over the ground. In other words, course is what we want, heading is what we can control, and the track is the result of our heading and the wind strength and direction. In a no wind condition, setting our heading to match our course results in a track that also matches our course. When there is a crosswind, setting the heading to equal the course results in a track that goes downwind. After a while, it becomes clear that our heading is no longer the same as our course and we are not going to end up in our desired location. We could continually modify our heading so that it is always pointing where we want to go. This results in a curved track like this. While we will get there, we will have travelled further than necessary, taken more time, and will have lost more height. The solution is to turn the heading slightly into wind so that our course and our track match. Notice how the house is no longer directly in front of the nose of the glider, but still appears to come straight towards the glider. Also notice that the glider is not turning, the wings are level and the yaw string is straight. If we turn too much into the wind, then the house will appear to pass behind the glider. Too little and the house passes in front of the glider. Judging the correct amount to point it into the wind takes a little practice. Even experienced pilots will have to modify their heading to ensure that they're flying straight. Notice that the focus of the lookout should be in the direction of travel, not in the direction the glider is facing, and that there is reduced visibility to the side of the direction of travel. As always, good lookout is essential. Like all aircraft, gliders have limits on how fast and slow they can fly. These limits are marked on the airspeed indicator. The green line starts at the minimum sink speed, the speed at which the glider descends the slowest. This is only slightly above the stall speed and so is close to the minimum safe flying speed. The green arc stops at the maximum manoeuvring speed, above which you must only use small control deflections. The red line marks VNE, the maximum speed that you should never exceed, as it will cause serious damage to the glider. There is more complexity to airspeed limitations. For now, we will say that it is safe to fly within the green arc. A correctly ballasted glider is stable in pitch. Let's look at what that means. There are two types of stability. Static stability refers to an object's ability to stay as it is. So a ball on a flat floor, if undisturbed, will stay there forever, whereas a pencil balanced on its tip will fall over. Dynamic stability is the ability to return to a previous state after a shock. A ball in a bowl will eventually return to the bottom of the bowl, but a ball on a hill will roll away and never return. You will remember the three axes of the glider from exercise 5. Pitch stability concerns rotation around the lateral axis and thus speed control. The glider is statically stable in pitch if the center of gravity is in front of the neutral point. A stable glider will maintain a constant speed and return to that speed after a disturbance such as a gust of wind. A glider is statically unstable if the center of gravity is behind the neutral point the speed would tend to oscillate, getting faster and slower and never settling down. If the centre of gravity were far enough back, the glider would be completely uncontrollable. This is why we always check the weight and ballast of the pilots before each flight. You already know that you can change the airspeed of the glider by raising or lowering the nose. 
it might not surprise you that the trim changes the attitude and thus the speed that the glider will stabilize at so it is a little like cruise control in a car the trim is usually a green lever which is next to the stick or on the left side of the cockpit moving the trim forward sets a nose low attitude and a high air speed moving the trim backwards sets a nose high attitude and a slow air speed to trim to a desired air speed you first use the stick to set the attitude and wait for the air speed to stabilize once you have your desired airspeed, you move the trim until you can feel no forward or backward pressure on the stick. You can check that you have trimmed correctly by briefly letting go of the stick. The attitude and speed should remain constant. There are two main types of trimmer. Spring trimmers use a spring to move the stick slightly forwards or backwards and hold it in that position. Aerodynamic trimmers use a small trim tab on the elevator which slightly lifts or depresses the elevator in flight. From the pilot's perspective, there is little difference except that aerodynamic trims require airflow over the elevator and so don't work when the glider is moving slowly. This is only really an issue during the ground run of takeoff and landing. The air exercises associated with this briefing are for the instructor to demonstrate the inherent pitch stability of the glider, how to maintain straight flight, how to use the trimmer and the visual references, how to monitor the instruments, how to control the heading with reference to the ground, and then for the student to practice use of the trimmer and maintaining straight flight on a heading. At all times, good lookout is required, including instrument monitoring. Threats and errors for this exercise are collision, managed by good lookout, getting too far from the airfield, so monitor the height and distance relationship, especially when downwind, and pupil error or adverse reaction where the instructor will have to take control.